Somewhere in the third or fourth draft, the idea came to me of a, a hyper compassionate child that this is happening to, you know, and that's why he was chosen to, to have this gift to see ghosts. Ironically, the first great lines that I wrote for that character aren't in the movie and weren't in the final draft, but they started me realizing who Cole was as a character. Action, Haley. Me. They give you the right expression. <laughs> the second audition was the first time we had a real long conversation about him there, and I guess uh, the nerves went away because I just got into talking about the character with them and talking about how much, uh, uh, you know, how Cole really feels for the people he sees and, and how the film was about communication. It wasn't just about ghosts. Put the camera on, Kyle. One last rehearsal. This is okay, it. rehearsal's up. Last time for everybody to make mistakes. Films, remakes of uh, TV shows from the 60s. And Knight just makes these stories up out of his head. He's a great storyteller. He, he thinks in big pictures. I mean, although he does think about individual shots, he thinks about telling the story with the camera. Like here? Olivia? Um, how about... How's that, Kyle? Yeah. I wanted to do good. I wanted to not ruin the film, you know, but I wanted to, to do what I set out to do, you know, which is, is be true to this character and, and to let everyone in that room feel a bit of what I was feeling, which was only a bit of what he was feeling. He and Vincent are a lot alike, but I guess Cole maybe might be a little stronger. And he, and though he, uh, he feels for the people that he he sees. I think that's the one thing that, that keeps him from completely falling apart. What's amazing about Haley is, I talked to him as an actor, not as a child actor. And that was irrelevant. That he was that he was young, you know, just directly as another actor, in the best way, an inspired actor, which is, uh, you know, the, the greatest thing you hope for. And um, the one thing we did with Cole, which I learned a lot of lessons from my, my previous movie, which was Wide Awake, which also starred another 10-year-old, was um, showing a child sad is basically to empty all the reserves that the, the audience has. If they have any, whatever that amount is that they have of, you know, we'll go with you and we're going to give as much as we can emotionally before you, we get back, it empties it entirely. When you see a child, you know, sad on screen, it's like, okay, it's all gone, and now what? You better have something good now because um, I got nothing left and I got no patience left. And um, that's something I learned, you know, the hard way. And I, and so Haley um, and I sat down at the beginning of the movie and I said, you can't ever be sad in this movie, okay? And so you can express it, you can express emotions as fear, you can express anger. I want you to be a fighter. I don't want you to mope at all. I want you to fight this with every fiber of your being, your existence, you know? Haley Joel came in completely prepared to, you know, play this part. And when I was working with him, when I was working with him as an actor, as one actor to another, I found him very compelling to watch. Not too long after we started filming, I realized that that would be an interesting thing to just use, to just watch him and be fascinated by him, because I was. I was fascinated by this 11-year-old boy who has this incredible acting talent, and just how weird it is to see that in a, in a young man, in a young, in a young you know, boy, to see this guy acting and crying on cue, on take 16, cry at the same spot every time. OK, here we go. Marker. And action. He was two things on that film. He was a little boy, a little 11-year-old boy. And when they said action, he was an 11-year-old man-child who was capable of a really broad range of emotions and a real lightness, a real light touch in his performance that is really rare in, in all actors and re incredibly rare in child actors. Ready? Let's do it. Okay. When you guys walk in, I've been here. He's very much a kid. When he's with other kids, he does play and he's normal, whatever that is. But he's very abnormal too because he's brilliant. And it kind of makes sense because kids are less self-conscious. But to have his, his understanding is crazy. He's one of a kind. They, they broke the mold after Haley. 
when he discussed the character, it wasn't a kid who sees dead people, it's a, it's a sensitive kid. This is a movie about communication, oh, and he also sees dead people. <laughs> his sensitivity for other people and stuff like that 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 comes i guess that's that's why that's sort of the theory why he gets uh, the gift not really a blessing though <laughs> you know he has to go through things that he really shouldn't have to experience at such a young age and that has an effect on him you know mentally you know because he hasn't even grown up yet and he's already experiencing these things so he's lost a lot of that innocence Tony is great i mean she it was it wasn't hard at all to uh to pretend that she was that she was you know my mother in the film and it's really hard for cole to keep the secret from her uh, and even though he really loves her and even though that's that's really the only person before malcolm that he can trust it was nice to be able to play a gentle character i had done a couple of films that were ungentle or not about you know being uh uh, an introspective character and, and I've done probably more of those than I have films where I play introspective characters so it was a nice change of pace he was wonderful and I feel very lucky that I got an actor who was as good as he was to uh, have play Malcolm because it brought a lot of new things to the scene that wouldn't have been there had it not been for Bruce he doesn't want to be isolated any more than he already is he doesn't want people to think he's weirder than they already think he is and so the, so the first time he trusts that doctor it's a very hard scene for him it's it's hard for him to 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 tell somebody the thing the things that he's he's been holding back so one that probably brought the most challenge for me was the scene when uh, Bruce tells me that he's not going to be my doctor anymore I'm going to transfer you I know two psychologists Don't fail me. Don't give up. You're the only one who can help me. I know it. I can't help you. Cole's emotions sort of reach the highest point, you know, where he gets the most scared. Because this doctor's coming to his life, and he's giving him the first glimpse that maybe there's a way out of being scared all the time. And then, and then it's going away. And that type of fear, you know, a fear even uh, amazingly beyond what he's been experiencing all his life, that was, uh, it was challenging. I spent a lot of time in rehearsal, you know, the night before with my dad and we studying and going all the scenes that preceded it and uh, were coming after it to see what kind of uh, tones had to be there in the scene, you know, what sort of special things that would affect things that would come after it and what I had to bring in to the scene from things that happened before it. The first time I did it, I, I knew it wasn't there, you know, the first take I wasn't happy with and I really had to, to pound it out, you know, I guess I'd gone to the to really the highest point I'd ever gone with really emotionally pumping myself up for the scene. And it turned out to be, uh, I guess, one of the scenes of, you know, greatest heartbreak because that's where the light at the end of the tunnel is sort of being closed off for him. And that was uh, immensely hard to do. It was a really emotional day. Some of the crew was crying, which is fun, you know, to, to get all worked up like that. And, but it wasn't right for the scene. So we, we kept going to the point where I wasn't crying at all. We did a couple takes like that. I wanted Knight to have as many options as he could in the editing room. I'm not that big a fan of what I call wet scenes, you know, where everybody's just crying all over the joint. Those scenes do exist of me just bawling my eyes out, telling them I, I can't be a therapist anymore, but thank God they're not in the movie. So I think it would have just, it just wasn't right for the character.